Well, good morning, Prime Timers. It's good to be with you today. And I'm so grateful for the technology that allows us to come together in this way during these unusual days. This morning, I want to talk with you about a word that has a negative connotation. It's a five-letter word, and for many in our society, it's a bad word, and the word is aging. There are many cultures around the world today that still res really respect and hold the elderly and the older folks in high regard. They, they revere them, in fact. But in today's modern Western societies, you may have noticed this isn't always the case. If you're older, you may experience that everything seems to have to be done very quickly. Right now, there's no time to wait. And if you have a more measured pace or you want to think things through or you want to make a sober decision about something, you feel the pressure to stand aside, to be quiet, leave it to the younger folks. But the fact is, you have much to offer. I recently talked to a woman who is still active. She's intelligent. She's vibrant. She is very active in her life, and she wants to participate in things. She told me that once she turned 65, she felt like she had become invisible to many people in the younger generation. She'd be introduced to people. They didn't remember who she was. She even started to feel sometimes a bit invisible in her church community. And if she, she felt like they thought she was washed up or something like that. Yet she still believed that she had a lot to contribute, much to offer to those around her. And so maybe you have experienced some similar feelings. You have a lifetime of experience. You'd like to help your children, your community, your church. You want to help the world around you as well. Yet you've experienced this cult of youth that seems to permeate much of society. But you love the Lord and you want to contribute. The Bible, as it always does, has some examples and some insights to help steer us in the correct kind of thinking. I'd like to reference here Psalm 92, verses 12 to 15, where it says, The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of the Lord. They flourish in the courts of our God. Now get this part. They still bear fruit in old age. They are ever full of sap and green to declare that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Isn't that wonderful that the righteous, those of us who love God and strive to follow him and to be Christians who are Christ followers, that we will flourish in the courts of God that we can still bear fruit in old age. So let's look at an example from scripture of this. I'm sure you remember that wonderful story of Caleb. In Numbers 13, we read that Moses and the Israelites were near Canaan, the promised land that God had promised to uh, Abraham more than 400 years earlier. And Moses decided, he was leading the Israelites, he had to send spies into Canaan to check out the place. And they returned, the spies uh, came back 40 days later. And by the way, two of the spies were two young men, Joshua and Caleb. And when they returned, all of them reported that the promised land was filled with abundance, overflowing with milk and honey, they said. And it was, an, it was just a beautiful place. However, most of the spies were not happy because they said the cities were fortified, the people were large and strong, and they decided we shouldn't go there, with two exceptions. Joshua and Caleb said, this is where the Lord led us. This is where we need to go. Caleb was 40 at the time, and he was adamant that they should go and occupy the land as the Lord had said. But the Israelites as a whole decided they wanted to abandon their leader. They were going to get rid of Moses, choose a new leader, and go back to Egypt. Egypt, where they'd been slaves for more than 400 years. But Caleb and Joshua persisted. They said, we shouldn't rebel against the Lord. But th that got them in even more trouble. The Israelites decided they were going to stone Caleb and Joshua but the power of the Lord appeared at the tent of meeting where they all were. And Moses interceded for the Israelites. He asked God to forgive them. 
And God did pardon them, but he also promised that none of the people there, with the exception of Joshua and Caleb, would be able to enter the promised land. Caleb was strong, he was brave, he was courageous. But that's not the end of his story. Forty-five years later, the children of Israel are now living in the promised land. And Joshua, now their leader and an old man himself, was portioning out the land as inheritances. So what did Caleb have to say? Well, we're going to look at Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 to 13. And I know you know this story. Then the people of Judah came to Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb the son of Jephunneh the Kenizzite said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God in Kadesh Barnea, concerning you and me. I was forty years old when Moses the servant of the Lord sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. But my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt. Yet I wholly followed the Lord my God. And Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land on which your foot is trodden shall be an inheritance for you and your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, just as he said, these forty-five years since the time that the Lord spoke, spoke this word to Moses, while Israel walked in the wilderness. And now, behold, I am this day eighty-five years old. I am still as strong today as I was in the day that Moses sent me. My strength now is as my strength was then, for war and for going and for coming. So now give me this hill country of which the Lord spoke on that day, for you have heard on that day how the Anakim were there with great fortified cities. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall drive them out, just as the Lord said. Then Joshua blessed him, and he gave Hebron to Caleb the son of Jephunneh, for an inheritance. I love how Caleb, at the age of 85, declared that he was just as strong as he was at 40. And we can debate whether he was physically as capable. I, I know that as I've gotten older, I have lost some strength, but I think he was talking more of the strength of his heart and, and his, his will and his desire to serve the Lord. And his attitude was so wonderful. His trust in God and his good attitude led him to be productive in the years where some folks just give up or think they're unable to be productive or to help anyone. But brothers and sisters, I've got some news for you. Your church and your community need you. There's always something you can do. First of all, this world and Cedarview Community Church need your prayers. If you're not doing so already, and I know many of you are, please pray for our pastors and the leaders of various ministries throughout this church. It's been a difficult time for the past 13 months or so for all of us, so let's lift each other up in prayer. Secondly, are you keeping in touch with friends and family? What about a quick phone call to encourage someone you haven't talked to in a long time and help lift their spirits? Pray with them over the phone. There are a couple of people I know who have the wonderful habit of sending out little notes and cards of encouragement from time to time. I know this because my wife and I, my Janet, who uh, is my dear wife, many of you know her, we've been recipients of some of these cards uh, several times over the past year. And it's uplifting to know that there are people who are thinking of us and praying for us. So that's something you can do. Thirdly, You've may, you may have been a Christian for many, many years, and you likely have some wonderful insights and experiences to share. Have you considered writing your testimony? Might be worth doing, you know, that's part of your history that you could pass on to the next generation. Have you considered spending time with a younger brother or sister from the church and being a mentor for them? Or as a couple, if you're Married, have you considered being mentors to a younger family? If that's something you'd like to do, I suspect we could help you connect with someone who would deeply appreciate your kind help, encouragement, and guidance. I was recently talking with my mother. She'll be 98 in July, and while she does have some physical limitations, she still lives on her own, is a scrabble whiz, and still does volunteer work from home. She told me that so far this year, she's made more than 40 large cloth drawstring bags 
for a Christian relief agency that fills the bags with clothing and school supplies for children in the third world. It gives her a real sense of practicality uh, to help others and to share the gospel of Jesus with them. Well, Cedarview, for example, has a blanket ministry. Can you knit or crochet? You could help there. That's another thing you could do. And I know that some of you might be thinking, well, Jonathan, I'm sick or incapable of doing certain things at this stage of my life. I'm weak. I'm unable to talk to people long on the phone or to do certain physical things. But please don't be disheartened. Please let those of us who can help know your needs. If you can send us an email or, or make a phone call and ask for help, we will pray with you, for you, call you if you like, help you with anything that you need help with. God calls us at various stages of our lives to do different things, but he calls us to love one another and to help one another. By the way, loving one another isn't just a fancy phrase about good feelings we have. It's a practical, active verb to love. So if you need help or encouragement yourself, please let me know. You can leave me a message at the church, or you can call me on my cell phone, and hopefully this will be on the screen below me. My number is 905 716 3574. And you can also email me at jkramer at cedarview.org. Thanks for joining me today. And remember to stay tuned at the end of our prayer time for the hymn. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for the men and women with us this morning and those who will watch this video later. We are so grateful for their wealth of experience as Christians. And we know that many of them have walked with you for many years. Give them and give each of us the opportunities to serve you in ways you choose for us. Grant us strength and courage. Give us boldness and give us peace in our hearts and minds. I ask that you provide for my brothers and sisters that their every need will be filled. We pray and bless their families too. I ask, Lord Jesus, that you fill them with the joy that comes from knowing and serving you. Help us remember these words from Psalm 73. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Thank you, dear God, for being our portion forever. We praise you and lift up our hands to you in thanksgiving. And we pray all of these things in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thanks for joining us today. Stay tuned for the hymn. Hi, Prime Timers. Carol DiDonato here, and I've been asked to lead us in a hymn today. And it's uh, a real pleasure and a blessing for me to be able to do that. And I chose Amazing Grace, and I pray you will be blessed as we sing this great hymn together. Mm -hmm. 